So in today's episode of Taking Back My Power, I've got another one of my work colleagues called Chris. Um, and I'm just going to be asking him to give an example of a situation where he felt his power was taken away from him and what did he do, what did he learn from the situation, if he could do things differently, what would he do? And if there's any advice to the listeners he can give. So thank you, Chris, for joining me. It's okay. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Um, so yeah, can you give a situation or an example um of um a, a circumstance in your life when you felt your power was taken away from you? Well, I suppose the the most the biggest thing that ever happened in my life was when my dad died. Um, is is that the kind of thing you mean? Sort of. Yeah, it can be any. Control? It can be anything. Anything. It can be a personal experience. It can be a professional experience. Whatever. Well, that's by far, my dad died was by far the biggest thing that ever happened to me that had the most impact on me, the most serious thing that ever happened to me. Um, and I was surprised by how I coped with it. I just, when I first um, became aware that he was ill and that he probably would die, I just thought I wouldn't be able to cope. I just thought that was it. Um, you know, so if, I did, if, if you don't mind me asking, how long ago was this and how this did was that die? Five years now. Wow. Yeah, five years yeah. ago. And it just, obviously, you know, you pay, everyone dies at some point, you know, your parents yeah. are going to die, you know, yeah. in most cases, they die before you do, generally speaking. And, you know, so obviously, I, I suppose I knew it would happen at some point, but it just seemed incomprehensible to me that it would happen. I mean, it's you know, it's the same for everyone, I suppose. You almost think your parents are invincible in a way, even though you know they're not really. And uh, um, so when, when he was ill, and it, it just seemed incomprehensible that he would die, and I just thought I wouldn't be able to cope with it at all. But, you know, the fact is I did cope with it, um, and I think that did strengthen me in in a way, because it showed that I could. I realised that I could face something that seemed totally awful and incomprehensible, and actually survive it. <laughs> so you talk I mean, about it. You talk so you talk about it strength, strengthening you. How did it strengthen you? Um. I think it made me realise that I can cope with terrible things happening, even though it was a, you know, it's the first time I'd ever faced something really awful, but it wasn't, you know, it was a fairly normal thing as well. Obviously, you know, your parents do die at some point, you know, it's more likely when they're older, you know, that, and I realise it's far worse losing you know, losing an older parent, I don't think generally is as bad as losing a partner, husband, a wife, or a child, or, yeah. you know, so I do, I do appreciate that. But just in my world, and in my consciousness, it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me. And therefore, I had to find a way of dealing with it. And so how, I, did, how did you deal with it? Um, I found talking to people helped who'd been through the same thing, which I didn't think would particularly help, but it did. And one thing that helped me to see, it's important to try and keep some sense of normality and routine, even when things are, are terrible. So you try and keep, um, try and keep some sense just try and keep some sense of normality, which is quite difficult. And I thought that would be impossible. But I just found that it was just keep doing things that I like doing and 
trying to maintain normality as much as possible, especially when I was at home visiting my dad. Um, and I also coped by, I went for a lot of walks when I was, when I went to see him, either when he was in the hospital, I went home, when I was, when he was at home for a while. I just walked a lot, which I found really comforting, and especially walking around places that I'd been when I was a child or a teenager, like the route I used to walk to school and things like that. And I found it very, um, I found that quite comforting. Um, I think it was just, I had some, you know, counselling through work after my dad died and I found that quite useful because, I mean, the counsellor approached it not in a particularly emotional way, but more of in an intellectual way, which I don't know if you thought, <laughs> I don't know why he did that with me, but, yeah. you know, it wasn't the kind of counselling where I went in and burst into tears because the counsellor didn't really seem like that kind of person to me. He helped me understand it more in a, a sort of psychological way, which I found actually found, it doesn't sound that useful, but I actually found it quite useful. Mm -hmm. And they explained to me about how people process death uh, mentally. And he talked about different theories about how you, you know, you, there's some theories you don't really be, feel like a whole adult person until your parents have died because you, I can't really remember the exact theory, but, you know, it is part of becoming a, an adult and a grown up, yeah. which might not happen until you're, well, you know, 50, 60 or older sometimes. But I, I just found all this quite interesting and thinking about it in, it sounds a bit cold in a way, I suppose, but thinking about it in quite a sort of intellectual way sort of helped me, you know, as well as the emotional aspects of it. I'm not, I'm not making it sound that useful, but, but I found it useful, yeah. So, and because you also told me about in your last podcast that you're part of a band and you, you know, you play music. So was that something that helped you and your dad's passing? Actually, it was very important because I played the guitar for a long time, since I was about 12, but just before my dad died, I started learning the drums. And that was incredibly important for helping me cope with him dying. Um, it just, there was something about it because it's very, it's quite physical. It's quite a physical activity, playing the drums. Yeah. It's quite good for you mentally as well. And there's something about doing it that really kind of took me out of myself and helped me to cope with it and feel like I could, that I could cope. That, you know, there's something about it that made me feel like that. And I don't know quite what it was. I mean, a lot of people do say that drumming is very good for you, sort of mentally. And it, it, it really, it really helped me cope. And it almost altered my personality in, in some ways, because I would just, I was determined to become, you know, better at playing the drums and to learn it properly. And I just kept doing it and doing it. And I didn't give up even when I found it a bit difficult. And, you know, I just, I think that helped, it made me, helped to make me a sort of stronger person as well, in a way. Um, so that really, really helped. And then obviously, you know, um, living with your father, did that help as well? Was she quite comforting and understanding and oh yes of course yes she's very you know i don't know what i would, would have done without her she was really important yeah yeah so i mean i don't want to overstate it i mean obviously you know he was well he was 74 when he died which is not really old but it's not young either and yeah. you know he had a very good life and he even though he had cancer he had no he didn't suffer you know, so I am grateful for those um, kind of things. I don't want to kind of overstate how awful it was. It was awful for me personally, but I am aware that other people have far worse situations when parents die where they're younger or, you know, they're in a lot of pain or whatever. But it was just a big thing that happened <laughs> to me, I suppose, when I haven't had many big things happen. So, 
I suppose you can only judge and think about things from the situation you're in. And my situation was that was the first time anything, any major upset had happened in my life. So like, if you could go back five years ago and do anything different, like, would you? I think, uh, I don't think I would. I don't really have any regrets about it in that kind of way. I think when I faced previous problems in my life, which were more minor, I wish I'd dealt with them better. And I think... Can you give an example? I think a lot of the time when... Um, well, you know, I, 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 obviously I'm a musician, I play the guitar. When I was at school, I was in a, a band with other people at school and they, you know, I really enjoyed it, but they, they kicked me out of it <laughs> for various reasons. When I was about 14, I was absolutely devastated. And I didn't really play in a band for quite a long time after that. And it's quite, it seems like quite a minor thing, but it really knocked me back and I couldn't, I just didn't seem able to it really knock my confidence. And I really just couldn't get past it. You know, it really upset me. And I wish I'd just thought, well, you know, I'm just gonna carry on and I don't care and I'm just gonna keep going. I wish I'd had that kind of confidence and resilience when I was 14. Do you see what I mean? So so okay, so you said when it so up so you started it. Um, playing when you were 14 and then because of an, an, an setback, you decided not to give it a go. So, so how far along was the gap until you... Oh, well, until you I mean, I kept, I kept playing still, but it really upset me and knocked my confidence. So it was probably, you know, a few years before I had the confidence to join another band properly. And I was always lacking in confidence. I mean, I still did it and still played and played with other people sometimes, but I was just really, really lacking in, in confidence, you know? And I think looking back, I, I just, there was no need for me to feel as bad as that about it. But, you know, I was only, 14, maybe 15 at the time. And um, I suppose quite a fragile, sort of oversensitive person in a way. You know, and I, I, I don't really like having regrets about things, but in a way, you know, I wish I could have been a bit more resilient. Um, you know, because when I started learning to play the drums, I did join bands. And I obviously, at first, I wasn't really good enough to be in them. And that, you know, not in a horrible way, but they tell me, but I didn't care. I just kept going and going yeah. and going, you know, until I got really, you know, good enough to play with other people. And um, I wish I'd had that kind of resilience when I was younger, but I mean, you know, you don't always, that's for a lot, most people, I think that's something that comes with age. Yeah. So like going back to, sorry, going back to when you were 15, and you know you didn't you know you you, you had a, like a, a bit of a, a scary moment when you know you had a setback. So was there a particular moment or a particular um, episode when Eva so but gave you that confidence and you thought you know what I'm going to try again? It wasn't really a specific time. It was just over time. I just became more determined to sort of give it another try really and to try joining another band. So there wasn't really one uh, incident. I still, even when I did it, I still felt a bit uncertain and a bit worried. Um, but gradually, I think just getting older and, you know, I suppose more mature in a way. Um, I just developed more resilience. Um, but that was, I think even for being 15,